Hi, this is Laura Clark from LA Story, and I'm here at the LA Film Festival with One Lucky Elephant director Lisa Lehman and producer Christina Calissimo. Thank you for meeting with me today. Well, I wanted to talk about, first of all, um, if you could tell me a little bit about your film and what brought you to Flora and David in the first place. Um, so, a friend of ours, uh, who's the composer on the film and a co-producer, her name is Miriam Cutler, mm -hmm. she's the resident composer of Circus Flora. And so she watched Flora the Elephant grow up over a number of years. And when she heard that David Balding, the circus producer and owner and kind of surrogate dad of Flora, mm -hmm. when she heard that he was going to retire Flora, she thought this would be a fantastic film. So initially, she called me and asked me if I would do the film, and I said, Oh, I'm sorry, Mira, but I don't do films about animals. I'm mm -hmm. just interested in films about people. And somehow, so then she... <laughs> yeah, somehow we managed to get her on a plane, right. <laughs> thankfully, to um, Flora's final performance in St. Louis, and that was in 2000. Ten, ten years and one month ago. Yeah. Wow. So the yeah. film, uh, speaking of that, the film was ten years in the making. Can you talk about some of the challenges or triumphs, even, um, that that came throughout the process? Oh man, how much time do you have? <laughs> exactly. In 50 words or less. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think really, realistically, you know, the, the reality of the challenges that we faced were pretty much financial. Um, the story was there, our characters were open and accessible to us. It really was about, um, you know, it really wasn't anybody who was interested in giving us the financing to make the film. And so we kept making it anyhow. We just kept going. So I think one of the really, It's really a challenging thing to know what, you know, what what has to go by the wayside. There's so many story points you want to tell, so much backstory, and compressing, you know, 28 years of her life into 81 minutes. That is a challenge storytelling wise. Right. So it came in also really handy that Lisa also had been a you know, top editor. Uh -huh. So I think from her, you know, as she was directing, you know, she's also thinking a lot about where certain. I can imagine the challenge with all of that footage, all of the years of footage. It's <laughs> a lot. Yeah, a lot of footage. <laughs> we edited for over a year and a half. Yeah, well, with some time off. I think it's yeah. about a year, a little over a year. A little over a year. Yeah. yeah. Which seems pretty typical for independent documentaries, actually. Okay. Um, well, Christina, I know you have a close connection with zoos. Um, have it, your dad was the former director of the Miami Zoo. Miami and, um, I. One of the questions in the film, um, it brings up the treatment of animals, and should they be in captivity or should they be in the wild? And with kids enjoying zoos and you having this relationship with zoos, can you kind of speak to the contradiction of, it's so great to be able to learn from animals and to see animals, but at the same time, they're in an, such an unnatural environment. How can we kind of address that, or how do you address it in the film, or how can we, um, get the fut our future generation to kind of reconcile those things together? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a really interesting question, and it's, I'm so glad that you got that from the film, because that's, that's what, we, what we want people to really think about, is that what can we do? And how can we go about living on this planet all together, but in a respectful way? It would be, I mean, I, I sort of like to think of it as, um, you know, we've asked these animals to come and live in our world and to be our guests. Yet we're learning that they don't do so well in our world. We we cannot meet all of their their needs, whether it be social, intellectual, or even just by the sheer amount of space, mm -hmm. uh, especially with elephants. And it's complex. But I think now that we have Animal Planet and Discovery Channel and 
still captivity, and those animals, you're seeing them in an unnatural environment, and so they're behaving unnaturally. Mm -hmm. A lion that you see in the zoo is not like a lion that you would see in the wild. So educationally, I, I think that we can start utilizing our technology that we have. In, in fact, um, there's a, believe it or not, an elephant sanctuary in Tennessee, and um, what they talk about is is that you don't have to go to a zoo to see an elephant and appreciate elephants as a species, that mm -hmm. you can do live video conferencing now. Mm -hmm. They have elephant cameras, so that, you know, way out 30 feet up in the air so that it's not disturbing the elephants. Mm -hmm. So we don't, you know, elephants aren't on display there. But there are other ways, as Christina says now, where you can see and appreciate elephants, but without forcing them to live in a confined space. Right. And so, last question. Um, would you recommend your film for kids? And if so, what age? Oh, I think so, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have Perry, who just walked in, <laughs> who gave us. I say hi, Perry. <laughs> hi, Perry. 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 Did you get him? I mean, yeah. Do you want him? <laughs> so, uh, Perry gave us four out of five starfish. And good. I actually was just talking to Perry and his mom. And oh yes. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> Perry made me Flora. Will you show oh, us how to make these? Very sweet. <laughs> it's awesome. And so this says says it all right here. And Perry, how old are you? Ten? Ten years old. Asked a really great question at the screening. He said, What did you say? Why are why are we so why, why are we so ignorant about animals? So when you get that from a 10-year-old after a screening of our film, I mean, Variety said we're the thinking person's Dumbo. When they said we're the thinking person's Dumbo and the most kid-friendly film on the festival circuit today. Oh, good. So, and, and really, where do you start social change? It's with kids, it's teaching them to think differently about animals and to treat animals with respect. So we hope that you know all the grown-ups and their kids will come see our film. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you.